Hello, wonderful family. Another beautiful day, another glorious opportunity to share God's word, rejoice in his word, and dig deep and learn from his word. <coughs> the Lord is good all the time. He is glorious, he is merciful, and his word trips and trails me all the time. Today, let us dig in quickly into the book of uh, First Timothy chapter 4. I won't say what the topic is, I'll just let you to summarize from it yourself. Beginning from verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, sorry, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So he's now going to now interpret what does uh, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, uh, what, what are the fruits. It says, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. This big sends a big, or throws a big blow or a big question mark onto um, a common trend now in um, Christendom where we're talking about dietary requirements to good health. Um, I don't know about what you think, but I think this scripture is very clear. Let's go back again. It says, doctrines of devils and uh, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils and part of the things those, those will do. It says we should give, in fact, let's read it again. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, not Harold, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry. So... Part of the things that they will do is they will forbid ones to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. What spin would you put on that? This is the Spirit actually saying that every creature of God is good. So every form of thing that can be prepared as food is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. You see the conditionality there. If it be, re if it be received with thanksgiving. I'm not saying this is bad for your health spiritually. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Is it that you don't want to eat it on personal grounds? That's up to you. Not that God has forbidden you from eating this. Release yourself from that bondage. If anybody commands it, it is not of God. The word says, the spirit expressly says that you should. Mark this. It says, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. It is set apart. It is hallowed. It is made worthy of consumption by the word of God and prayer. It says, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of this, these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. So as I'm putting you in remembrance of these things now, I'm making myself, I'm qualifying myself as a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith, and of good doctrine. Whereunto thou hast attained. It says, But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. He's saying that anything that is contrary to this is an old, is a profane saying. It's an old wives' fable. It is not founded on spiritual facts. It says, And exercise thyself rather unto godliness. So, what you should concentrate on is things that promote godliness. This thing, these other things with respect to foods, things to be consumed, do not foster godliness. They do not add to your godliness, neither do they subtract from your godliness. It says, exercise thyself rather unto godliness. 
or be concerned about things that promote godliness. Now, verse 8. This is a very uh, special one to me. It says, For bodily exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Now, that word for bodily exercise profited little. It is not actually talking about physical exercise because that's how one interpreted it all my Christian life growing up. We say bodily exercise profits little. Uh, but let me take that little that the bodily exercise profits. That's not the context here. The context here is in trying to get yourself in a particular shape spiritually by the things you permit in terms of the things you eat or don't eat. He's saying those exercises, those things that you want to use to discipline yourself in terms of I won't eat this, I won't eat that. He says it does not profit. The profit it gives you is very little. He says, but if you exercise your spirit man, if, you're, if, you, if you pay attention to your spirit man, it's not in the things you eat, you don't eat, that makes you more spiritual or that adds to your godliness. It is in exercising your spirit man. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. Hallelujah. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. So he's, he's telling you that your spiritual growth is based on confidence, faith, trust in God. Your, body, your, your, your health is also based on trusting God. And that for saying these things, there is reproach from the general public or the, or the, the general uh, thinking because it goes against the, the, the grain. You know, uh, in, in, in Scripture, particularly in the Old Covenant, there was a dietary code for the Israelites. This is actually almost in a direct opposition to that. There's this penchant to go back now to the dietary code. You can decide to follow that dietary code for your personal health sake, but note, it adds nothing to your spirit man. That's what scripture is saying, it adds nothing to your spirit man. And don't take it that if you don't follow that dietary code, you're offending God. He says, no, he says everything, all creatures, made by God and they are good they are good you remember the same thing happened with respect to Paul no not Paul Peter Peter who was functioning as a Jew with strict adherence to the dietary code that was given in the old covenant and God had to rouse him out of that when he fell into a vision and it was all kinds of quote and unquote clean and unclean animals were presented to him to eat and he had said that, no, I will not touch this. He was told to eat, to rise up, kill and eat. And he refused that those are unclean. And he, and he was admonished. He said, don't call that which God has called clean, unclean. And here he's saying that everything is clean, is permissible, is good. The, the uh, caveat there is you receive it with thanksgiving. It is set apart, it is sanctified by the word and prayer. Don't fall into that guilt trap and say, oh, I've offended God by eating this, or I'm going to offend God by eating that. No. If you don't want to eat it, fine. But don't feel that when if you eat it, you're offending God. You're not offending God in any way, shape, form, or fashion. God bless you. Hallelujah.